Hey, today I wanted to do a quick video talking about what's the value of Terraform for platform engineers or platform teams more generally. I think when we start by saying platform teams or platform engineers, it's almost helpful to start by sort of describing what are the different personas and what are they trying to, to solve for. I think for most people, you know, it's pretty obvious what the application teams want. So if we think about an app team, they're building their application or their service, and fundamentally what they care about is really their own application lifecycle, right? They care about delivering new features, fixing bugs, being able to iterate rapidly on their application. But if you think about a platform team, whether that's sort of you know, your cloud team, your DevOps team, your platform team, different organizations will call it different things. The platform team or the ops teams, they actually have a different set of concerns, right? Largely more around infrastructure lifecycle, right? And when we think about infrastructure lifecycle, it's a little bit divorced from the app itself. Obviously, it supports the application. The application's running on top of a set of infrastructure. But there's usually a whole bunch of secondary partners that platform teams have to work with. It might be their security teams, it might be their compliance teams, it might be their finance teams, because you're worried about a whole bunch of other requirements, right? You know, GRC requirements. Is my platform PCI compliant, for example? Right? I have security teams who are worried about, you know, is my platform secure? Are things patched? Am I taking care of vulnerabilities? I care about, you know, my finance and FinOps teams because they're worried about things like, you know, what's the cost? Am I optimizing my spend in cloud, right? So the platform team really has almost a primary customer, which is the app team. How do you enable them to build, deploy, manage their application? But you have a bunch of secondary customers as well to make sure the infrastructure is secure, it's patched, it's cost effective, et cetera. So you have a bunch of these different constraints. So when we think about then, well, what's the role of Terraform in enabling the platform engineers? It's a little bit different than when you think about Terraform for the app teams. Terraform for the app teams, relatively simple. They're writing infrastructure's code to deploy their app. That's what they care about. When we think about it down here, you're still doing the same thing, right? Obviously, Terraform itself doesn't change, right? We're still writing things as infrastructure as code. But then we start to think about, well, how do we address some of these other concerns that the platform engineering teams have? And at the heart of this, it's really starting to think about how do you industrialize your approach to cloud management so that these things get baked into the process so that the app teams don't have to think about them. So I think where most of this starts is driving a level of standardization around things like Terraform modules, right? So I don't want my application teams to have to redefine how do I provision a database? How do I provision my Kubernetes cluster? How do I deploy you know, a generic Java application? As a platform organization, I want to define those things as a shared set of modules so that my developers can come in and simply consume those, right? Oftentimes from a registry or library of these pre-written modules. So that becomes one piece of it, which is, okay, how am I simplifying the consumption of this and having a standardization of patterns? Then when we start thinking about things like GRC, security, these other pieces, what we want to enable those platform teams is how do you still have self-service for the application teams, but bring some of those controls in so that you're not worried that a developer is taking the pattern and going way off rails and introducing you know, potentially a GRC issue for you. So this is where things like policy as code come in, right? So whether you're using you know, Sentinel, which is a HashiCorp policy language to define various controls, or you're using something like Open Policy Agent, OPA, or Rego, you can define policy as code, and those policies can span different kinds of constraint, constraints. It could be a GRC constraint where, hey, you have to have these certain flags enabled to make sure my infrastructure is secure. It could be a set of security constraints, what resources you're allowed to use, or you, know, you can't set an S3 bucket to be public to the internet. That could be a security policy. And similarly, you might have cost policies that restrict what types of instance types you're allowed to use, or how many you know, clusters you're allowed to ask for, how many nodes in a, you know, how many nodes in a VM auto-scaling group you can request, things like that. They could be cost controls. So the policy doesn't really matter what type of policy it is, but it comes a consistent way that as a platform team, if we can impose that on the way that developers are consuming the infrastructure, we can enforce these controls without sacrificing some of that self-service that the application teams have. So this becomes key to it. Oftentimes, we might be using external tooling for some of this as well. So if we think about, we might be using Palo Alto Prisma Cloud, or we might be using Wiz, or we might be using Turbonomics to do optimization on these things. So then we think about how do we create a set of integration surface area 
so that we can connect these external tools that are being used for security or privacy or cost or these other things into the workflow that the developers are using. So within something like Terraform Cloud, we might use what we call run tasks, where we can interpose between a Terraform plan and apply operation. So in between plan and apply, we know what Terraform changes are gonna happen, but they haven't happened yet. We can flow those out to a third party system. They can say, hey, you're actually violating a set of security rules, block that action. And so that way the developers or the app teams can get that immediate feedback, the platform teams can maintain control and do it with a centralized type of approach, right? So there's a number of these different kind of capabilities that when we think about the platform teams care about, app teams might not, but how do we enable them to, to sort of think about those concerns and enact those concerns within a common pipeline? Then as we think about even going one step further, ultimately for most application teams, it goes back to the fact that what they really care about is their app lifecycle. They actually don't even care about things like infrastructure as code. For many application teams, having to learn something like Terraform is sort of a distraction. They're like, I wanna work on my Java app, I could care less you know, how infrastructure as code works or how Terraform works. I still wanna be able to consume these modules, but I don't have to necessarily learn Terraform. So this starts to get you into the realm of things like internal developer portals. So if we think about an internal developer portal, you'll often hear these sort of abbreviated because it's a mouthful to an IDP, then the goal is really how do I simplify that consumption experience for the app teams so that they don't have to think about infrastructure as code or Terraform necessarily. They can focus on, hey, I have a Java app, it needs a Mongo database, it has a Redis you know, uh, cluster associated with it. Make that happen for me. And that's really where we're focused with our HCP Waypoint offering. So Waypoint really is the HashiCorp internal developer portal. And the idea is to tightly integrate that with things like Terraform Cloud. The goal being that our platform engineers can define a set of these golden modules to say, great, here's how a Java app or a Redis or a, you know, a Mongo cluster work. Those are defined as Terraform, so the platform teams tightly control how they work, how they're configured, how we sort of address some of these considerations. But then what we're exposing to the developers and the app teams is sort of a higher level abstraction. They're just coming and say, give me a Java app with this set of you know, add-ons associated with it. I don't really have to care how it works. Ultimately over time, what that then enables is what we refer to as a, a set of golden patterns, right? These golden patterns are obviously defined through a set of modules. And that solves, I'll call it the day one provisioning problem. But then you get to sort of the day two challenge, which is great just because I've defined some infrastructure, might be my Java app, you know, I have my Mongo cluster, I have Redis. I still have a set of day two challenges, which is I have to deploy a new version of this Java app. I've deployed version one, but now my development team wants to push version two. So how do I build a new version? How do I deploy it? How do I manage that life cycle? You know, maybe I need to, you know, create an index in my Mongo cluster. Maybe I need to purge the cache within Redis. So there's a set of these sort of run books or day two actions that somehow need to be exposed as well. So we refer to that as a set of golden workflows, right? And these are sort of day two in the sense that after I've provisioned my infrastructure, I have a set of actions that I might need to invoke. And that's where Waypoint is designed to allow platform teams to define those things as well. So I might say, okay, here's how to do a build of a new version of your Java app. Here's how to do a deploy of a new version. Here's how to you know, build an index for your Mongo cluster. Here's how to purge the cache you know, for Redis. Right? So each of these might be a set of defined actions, right? And these are defined by the platform team because they know how it should work given the definition of their infrastructure and given the set of concerns that they have around, okay, well, do I make sure that it's done in a secure way and that the user actually has the right to invoke that particular action? And so we wanna be able to expose those at a higher level, but then really enable platform teams to define and model them with Terraform fundamentally, right? So taking a step back, I hope this is a little bit helpful as you think about you know, when we say Terraform for platform teams, what do we really mean? It's about separation of those two personas. What does an app team want out of infrastructure versus what are the concerns that a platform team or an ops team is solving for? Those include a bunch of other secondary problems around privacy, GRC, security, cost, et cetera. And so it's really around enabling those platform teams to create standardization through shared module registries, to drive those concerns through policy as code, to have common ways of integration with third-party systems to enforce those controls, to have a common system of record. 
that's also the other side of this, right? So I want a system of record. So I actually know, you know, what are all the changes everyone made? What's all the infrastructure under management? Do I have visibility to all of my infrastructure to enforce those various concerns? And then ultimately over time as we get more mature, how can we expose that to developers through an internal developer platform? One example of it might be HCP Waypoint, but you might be building your own with Backstage. You might be integrating Terraform behind a system like ServiceNow. So there might be many front doors in terms of how a developer comes to consume it. But ultimately from a platform team, I want a singular way of managing it, enforcing policy, enforcing controls around the whole thing. So that's really what we mean when we talk about Terraform for platform engineers. It's really solving the set of concerns that the platform teams have rather than only focusing on the concerns that the application teams have. Hopefully that was helpful and gives you some things to think about in terms of how do you solve for these various challenges for all of the different people involved with building and managing infrastructure.